My name is Gabrielle Mellon, and I will be doing my presentation on Native Americans. Native Americans have inhabited the land we now call the United States long before Christopher Columbus ever stepped foot on it in 1492. From the 16th to the 19th century, many explorers and countries attempted to colonize their land, which led to the decline in the Native American population. Over hundreds of years, there were many battles fought over the land between the British, French, the United States, and the Native Americans. During this, the Native Americans had been cooperative, showed resentment, revolted. In 1785, the Treaty of Hopewell was signed in Georgia. The ult this ultimately protected the Cherokee Indians from being forced off their land. In the Battle of Timbers in 1794, the last major battle was fought between the Native Americans and the United States, which involved the United States wanting control of the Northwest Territory, and overall led to the United States gaining control of the land. In 1814, Andrew Jackson, U.S. forces, and Native American allies attacked Creek Indians during the Battle of Horseshoe Bend due to them having opposed American expansion and intrusion of their territory. The Creeks gave up more than 20 million acres of land after their loss. In 1830, now President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act, which gave plots of land west of the Mississippi River to Native American tribes in exchange for the land that was taken from them. In 1836, the remainder of the Creek Native Americans left their land for Oklahoma as part of the Indian removal process. Of the 15,000 Creek Indians who were forced to go to Oklahoma, more than 3,500 don't survive. In 1838, only 2,000 Cherokee Indians had left their land in Georgia to cross the Mississippi River. President Martin Van Buren enlisted General Winefield Scott and 7,000 troops to speed up the process by keeping them at gunpoint and having them walk 1,200 miles. Over 5,000 Cherokee Indians died due to the journey. The many relocations of tribes and their hardships and deaths during the journey is now known as the Trail of Tears. In 1924, the C Indian Citizenship Act passed, which gave citizenship to all Native Americans born in the territorial limits of the country. The privileges of citizenship, however, were governed by the state law, and the right to vote was often denied to them until the early 20th century. In, the 19th, in 1968, the Indian Civil Rights Act was signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson, which allowed Native American tribes many of the benefits included in the Bill of Rights. It is recorded that 0.9% of the U.S. population or 2.9 million people identify as American Indian or Alaska Native alone, while 1.7% of the U.S. population, or 5.2 million people, identify as American Indian or Alaska Native alone or in a combination with another race. With the upcoming census, the population is expected to increase. It is shown that the largest population of Native Americans in the United States resides in Oklahoma. States that have over 100,000 Native American residents include California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Washington. The most recognized tribe that resides in the United States are the Cherokee Indians, who make up 26% of the American Indians and or Alaska Natives and tend to be located in North Carolina or Oklahoma. There was once more than 300 indigenous languages spoken in the United States, and approximately 175 remain today. The speakers of these languages number less than half a million. There are about 350,000 people who are speakers of Native American languages, with Navajo, Yupik, and Dakota being the most common. Unfortunately, in today's society, Native Americans have reported substantial and significant personal experiences of discrimination. It is said the most frequent place of discrimination occurs at the workplace or with the police. It is reported that roughly 3 in 10 Native Americans have experienced discrimination when it comes to being paid equally or getting a promotion, when applying for jobs, and when having interactions with the police due to being Native. It is also said that one-third of Native Americans have experienced racial or ethnic slurs and people making insensitive comments about their race or ethnicity. Many have also reported that they or a family member have experienced violence, threats, or non-sexual harassment also due to being Native. Nearly a quarter of Native Americans have reported being sexually harassed. Unfortunately, many Native Americans have avoided going to the police or the doctor out of fear of being discriminated against. 
Native Americans have been depicted as violent since their land was invaded by explorers. Throughout U.S. history, numerous acts of violence have been done against Native people. Those who were invaded those who were invading their land were seen as innocent. Meanwhile, Indians have been stereotyped for centuries to be barbaric and violent. Even after all that happened to them, almost any picture or drawing that we see of an Indian, they are represented with a tomahawk or sculpting knife in hand. Today, violence against Native American men and women are at alarmingly high rates. Images of Native Americans and Indian chiefs have also been placed on labels to advertise and market merchandise. Products they use Indians to help sell today include tobacco. Today, children in America are socialized into playing Indian, and Halloween costumes and Thanksgiving reenactments also stereotype Native Americans as misrepresented culture. Playing Indian, wearing Indian Halloween costumes, and, going thanks and doing Thanksgiving reenactments can cause racist stereotypes. The crops most used by Native Americans are often corn, squash, and beans, with corn being the biggest staple food item. Corn and various corn products are used very generously in Native American cuisine. Other foods used by them include greens, deer meat, berries, pumpkin, and wild rice. Native American food also consists of meat, including bear, deer, rabbits, prairie dogs, beaver, lamb, buffalo, mutton, and pork, and the use of wild grains and vegetables. Herbs have also played a vital role in Native American food. It is said that many of the earliest form of medicine were found from these food sources. They use herbs and plants such herbs herbs and plants including peppermint, spearmint, clover, sage, and rose hips to make teas and other foods. If it weren't for Native Americans, what we have learned as a society and culture about food and the natural and the natural American resources would be vastly different. Frybed also has an emotional and historical significance. It is a traditional Navajo recipe that they started making when they were being forced off their land by the U.S. government. It is a traditional food that can be at powwows and around kitchen tables, and it is a large, fluffy, plate-sized piece of fried dough. Instead of calling it religion, they call it a system of spiritualities where one singular Native American religion does not exist. Most Native American spiritualities spiritualities are polytheistic, meaning they have more than one god or goddess. There are some, though, who believe in monotheism, which is one major god or goddess. The idea of a spiritual great spirit, a singular great spirit, is apparent in many different tribes. They call it a wakan tonka. It encompasses a belief in spirits that interact with the world in various ways. The Wonkan Tonka is often considered a great force that exists in every person, animal, plant, and object in existence. Native Americans believe in a spirit that will live on after physical death stops the body. For them, they believe this spirit will continue on to another realm or spirit world, where it will live another type of life similar to when it was within a human body on Earth. They have things like vision quests, smudging, ceremonies, and real ritualistic dances to honor their spiritualities. The vision quest exists to form or encourage a type of connection to a spirit or guide that can give truths or understandings of a certain person. Individuals can also have vision quests for religious ceremonies with the purpose of giving them guidance in their adult life. Smudging is the burning of certain herbs or incense to produce lots of smoke and using the smoke to cleanse a person, object, or place. This is done to release bad energy or spirits. The sun dance is practiced by many cultures as a way to honor the sun. Many Native American religions view the sun as a great power in their spiritual world. In today's society, most Native Americans wear modern American and Canadian clothes in their daily lives, but Native American clothing styles still exist. Traditional garments, including buckskins, ribbon dresses, and beaded moccasins are still worn by many tribes, especially for formal events. Garments like breechcloth, leggings, headdress, and dance shawl are only worn at powwows and religious ceremonies. Native Americans use the word regalia for traditional clothes which are used for ceremonial occasions. Powwow regalia is a self-expression that blends historical and modern dress. This clothing represents community traditions and personal tastes. 
A dancer's powwow outfit tends to be an assortment of items that reflect their lives, interests, and family backgrounds, including family heirlooms or gifts crafted, crafted by family members. Dancers always wear some form of headgear. This includes war bonnets, porcupine head roach, head, headdress, ribbon, or band as a sign of formality. They also may carry objects like feathered fans, fur wrapped hoops, or staffs. The stomp dance is a tradition practiced mostly by East, Eastern Woodland and Southern Eastern tribes. It is given its name after the pattern of movement which occurs during the dance, which is a stomp and shuffle in a circle. This dance occurs during the peak of crop season and is often practiced on stomping grounds around a fire if the weather allows it. The fire represents the light of the sun, which is considered life-giving and sacred. Dancers will place themselves in a circle and move counterclockwise, alternating men and women with children trailing the end. The dance brings together generations and unites the community. Drum circles are common in ceremonies and in powwows. A drum is treated with much respect and considered to be sacred to Native Americans. The beat of the drum is meant to represent the heartbeat of Earth. The beat of the drum is believed to be a uniting force which brings together people of different tribes and unites a person's spirit to their body and mind. Traditionally, men do the drumming and women will participate in singing within the circle. Powwows are a cultural event that includes group singing and dancing by men, women, and children. During these, cultural traditions are passed down from generation to generation. One preserves tradition, singing to the creator, and dances to the heartbeat of the drum. Powwows are started as a way for nations to come together to celebrate success in hunting or battle. Today, they are seen as an opportunity to share traditions and reconnect to culture, family, other tribes, and to the earth. Their purpose is to reclaim pride and power and to celebrate life. Dancing and drum music plays a vital role in powwow ceremonies. A dancer's powwow outfit tends to be an assortment of items that reflect their lives, interests, and family backgrounds. At first, only warriors danced at powwows, but today they are dances for elders, men, women, teenagers, and children. Some of the dances at powwows include the grass dance, dance which is a men's styles dance depict, depicting the movement of prairie grass, which originated from the Omaha tribe of Nebraska, the jingle dance, which is a woman's healing dance, a fancy dance, which is a term used for both men's and women's style dance. Typically, it is fast and an upbeat dance. And the hoop dance, which is a traditional dance that tells a story using hoops to make different shapes of birds, plants, and animals. Smudging is a ritual using herbs like sage, which are burnt and placed in a smudge bowl while telling prayers. This ritual is a way of offering a blessing to spiritually purify an area or gathering. It is said that smudging is an important way to begin a healing gathering. This type of ritual can help reclaim aspects of their culture. Smudging is a bridge between mortal life and higher realms, which brings in good spirits and eliminates negative and stagnant ones. The most common herb used in smudging ceremonies are sage, cedar, sweetgrass, and tobacco. The sweat lodge is a ceremonial way of prayer with the purpose to connect with high realms, to purify the body and mind, and to uplift the spirit. The sweat lodge is a small, round, enclosed structure where red-hot rocks are in the center with medicinal herbs. Water is poured on the rocks, which produces steam that purifies and heals. The leader begins the sweat lodge ceremony with words of intention, drum beats and songs, and pours water over the hot rocks. Each participant of the ceremony may offer personal prayers. It allows them to connect with the greater, great spirit. Silence, prayer, and tribal music are a part of the ceremony. Native Americans are known for their traditional values and behaviors. They are widely known for their respect and acceptance of other cultures. They are unlikely to speak their opinions about other issues unless they are specifically asked about it. They also respect all living things. For Native Americans, in life and in tradition, all work has purpose. Whether they are doing schoolwork or working, they are often driven, focused, and committed to the task at hand. Native Americans are also very spiritual. 
They often show this when telling stories, singing songs, and in their traditions. For them, the spirit world is a part of everything. Native Americans also tend to be quiet and observant. They are encouraged to listen and observe the world around them, so they might be quiet in their daily life and when interacting with others. For them, this is a sign of respect. Compared to all other races in the United States, Native Americans have a lower life expectancy by 5.5 years. It is said the causes of lower life expectancy and the disproportionate disease burden in Native Americans may be due to an inadequate education, poverty, discrimination, and the delivery of health services and cultural differences. They have higher rates of death from chronic illnesses than any other race and ethnicity. Native Americans die of heart disease at a rate that is 1.3 times higher. They are diagnosed with diabetes at a rate that is 3.2 times higher. Chronic liver disease and cirrhosis is diagnosed at a rate that is 4.6 times higher. And intentional self-harm and suicide is at a rate of 1.7 times higher than all other races. In Native American youth, the rate is 2.5 times higher than the rest of the country and is the highest youth suicide rate among all other races and ethnicities. The leading cause of death for Native Americans is are diabetes of the heart, mal malignant ne neoplasm, unintentional injuries, and diabetes. Today, the majority of Native Americans speak only English. There are approximately 175 indigenous languages that are still spoken in the United States, with 170,000 people speaking Navajo. Even though most speak only English or speak both, English and an indigenous language, there still could be some people who only speak an indigenous language, which will cause a language barrier issue in the healthcare field. For Native Americans, they tend to take conversations slow and provide information indirectly through storytelling. They also listen carefully and use humor to help build relationships with someone. In the medical community, doctors and nurses tend to move quickly to find symptoms and to get information to make a diagnosis and relying on health information. They do this in a timely manner to assist as many patients as possible. Native Americans might not understand the medical staff due to the quickness of the conversation and may not trust or follow the, recommenda the recommended treatment because of this. Many tribes have three generation extended families. Parental activities like discipline and education are often passed onto the grandparents, aunts, and uncles, leaving the economic and social interactions to the biological parents. So when caring for a, mo a new mother of a Native American descent, it is important to not make any assumptions or preconceived expectations and determine if she is, in fact, the primary caregiver of her newborn. If the mother states that the grandmother or another relative will be providing a significant proportion of physical care of the newborn, the, new, the nurse should include them in the care and teaching of the family. It is important for nurses and other healthcare providers to not make judgments about the mother regarding her disinterest or lack of responsibility in caring for the newborn. In Native American cultures, women tend to be respected and influential. The woman is often the most verbal in making healthcare and family decisions. When a nurse or healthcare provider is providing care to the families, it is important to include the mother in the care and the teaching. By doing this, it will gain her approval and support of the plan, and it will likely help her family to go on board with the plan as well. For Native Americans, it is not uncommon for them to have a home without a clock. For them, time is to believe is believed to be a continuum and relative to what needs to be done. Due to this belief, there can be issues involving appointment times, medication administration, and preparation of specialty diet for certain conditions. If they are missing or being late for appointments, it should be addressed by finding the client's position of time. If the healthcare provider is dismissive of the client due to not attending or being late to the appointment, this may keep the client from further assessing their medical issue. For Native Americans, it is important to establish a close relationship with the nurse or healthcare provider before beginning teachings. The nurse or healthcare provider should be aware of that charts, clipboards, and documentation do cause barriers in the patient's trust. Before proceeding with care, communication is important for Native American culture, and the nurse should have an unhurried conversation with the patient and get to know them before proceeding with care and teaching. 
For traditional Native Americans, it is common for a medicine man or woman to play an important role in their health. The traditional healer is viewed as wise in the ways of nature and the relationships between humans and the environment. Items including feathers, cornmeal, grasses, rocks, or medicine bags might be used during healing rituals by traditional healers. If one of these items are placed on a patient at their bedside or in a crib or isolate, one should make every effort to avoid disturbing them. Conventional healthcare practices can usually be done in the presence of these traditional sacred objects. A medicine man or woman can be found in a rural and urban setting across the United States and in healthcare should be welcomed as a spiritual and medical collaborators. The use of traditional herbs shouldn't be con contradicted due to the patient using other medications, but should still be investigated before using. A cultural broker is someone who advocates on behalf of, of another individual or group. They will negotiate with the client and the healthcare system for an effective, beneficial healthcare plan for the client. Cultural brokering can mend the gap between the healthcare providers and the communities they serve. Cultural brokers can help Native Americans in healthcare by being advocates for their health values, beliefs, and practices within their cultural group or community. They can also strengthen communication between patients and other providers. Cultural brokers can will also help them by advocating for the use of culturally and linguist, linguistically competent practices during treatment. They will also increase access to care for minority groups like Native Americans and eliminate racial and ethnic, ethnic disparities in health. Some of the major barriers for Native Americans are access to care, discrimination and mistrust, and restrictive policies. For most homeless individuals living in the U.S., lack of health insurance is a major obstacle to obtain for medical, mental, and preventative health care. Unfortunately, Native Americans make up a large portion of the homeless rates in the United States. For homeless people, due to having a lack of health insurance, it can be quite difficult to obtain this medical, mental, and prevent preventative care. This access can also be difficult due to transportation. In the past, written ag agreements between Native Americans and agencies or individuals have been mistrusted or obtained under a false pretense. This misuse has led to a distrust of written agreements in the Native American community. To establish or maintain a trusting relationship with healthcare providers, the non-Native healthcare provider should be patient and allow su sufficient time for the family to consult with a tribal elder or matriarch before the written signature can be obtained. Differences in communication styles between some Native American individuals and healthcare providers have also led to issues in quality care. Differences can impact how patients discuss their symptoms, what they feel comfortable sharing, and their preferences for communication. Some resources for healthcare providers includes the Indian Health Service, which provides a widespread of information for providers and patients about how to help Native American patients physically, mentally, socially, and spiritual health. The American Psychiatric Association, which can provide information to healthcare providers about Native American populations, their significant history, and how to treat them. And also the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, which can provide healthcare providers about their health disparities, population, public information, and about the tribes, and etc. And here are some of my resources and the resources continued.